There was a stunning new report this morning in the Washington Post, which, if true, claims that President Trump is willing to do whatever it takes, even if that means breaking the law. Listen to that. Breaking the law to ensure that his border wall is built or portions of it before the 2020 election. According to the Washington Post, President Trump has said that he is willing to pardon officials of any potential wrongdoing if they break any laws to get the wall built quickly, waving off worries of eminent domain laws by saying simply, quote, take the land. Trump has also reportedly told aides to fast track billions of dollars in construction contracts and ignore environmental rules. CNN senior Washington correspondent Joe Johns is outside the White House this morning. Uh, not a denial from the White House of the story, uh, just saying that the president was joking. Is that credible, Joe? Well, uh, that's a good question. Mark Short, the vice president's chief of staff, was out here in the driveway just a little while ago, and I asked him flatly about that Washington Post report. Is the president offering pardons to people here at the White House uh, in order to get the wall built, even if they break the law? Now, this was just a one-word denial, a flat no from him. I also pointed out uh, that there have been reports of the president doing stuff like this before on uh, migration issues, including uh, an alleged uh, offer of a pardon to Kevin McAleenan at one point. Uh, I answered again, no. So uh, that you can call, certainly, a denial from the White House uh, as far as whether the president is joking anybody's guess. What we do know also, uh, not just from that reporting, but from what's already on the record is, as you mentioned, there's the issue of eminent domain, which is essentially seizing private property and making it public. In this case, it would be uh, for putting up the president's border barrier. Uh, the problem with that is that can take some time and it can also involve the courts. So uh, what this report may be alluding to is the fact that if the administration gets uh, in a jam on time, they may end up having to essentially uh, go around a court, and that's something somebody uh, might have to get a pardon for. Uh, also, you, know, you just have to point out, given everything that's going on in the House of Representatives, the Judiciary Committee, it's just not a good look for a president of the United States to order somebody to do something, even if they're breaking the law, and then offer them a pardon. So I'm sure there'll be more questions about this, Jim. Yeah, it's illegal. Joe Johns, thanks very much. Let's discuss this more with CNN legal analyst Ellie Honig. Ellie, I, you know, I shake my head here, uh, but the president encouraging aides to break the law to get a political promise done on a political timeline. Uh, this, of course, the Washington Post reporting. Um, is that obstruction of justice? If you're, if you're going to say you're going to pardon someone, <laughs> yeah. In advance. It could be, Jim. I, I share the same reaction. My jaw hit mm -hmm. the floor when I see this. In a word, it, this is lawless. Mm -hmm. This is lawless for the President of the United States yeah. to say, go ahead and break the law and I'll take care of you later. Now, the pardon power is very broad, no question about it, but there's a very important limitation, which is it is only backwards looking. You can only pardon somebody for something they've done from this moment looking back. There, you cannot, our Constitution does not permit the president to pardon someone prospectively and saying, mm -hmm. because, for this precise reason, because you don't want people out there with essentially, uh, you know, carte blanche to commit right. crimes at will. That yeah. is lawlessness. Talk about the laws that he is suggesting aides break to get this wall built. Because yeah. it's a whole list of them, is it not? Uh, there's a lot of different laws at play. Like, for, first of all, if you have a court order that that, that, w that aides would defy, that could be criminal contempt. That can people can go to jail for that. I've sent people to jail for that. There's also the issue of eminent domains, which Joe just raised. So the Constitution says the federal government does have the right to seize private power, but as Joe said, that gets caught up in the courts because the key second part of that is if they pay just compensation. You can't just take someone's right. property. But you for instance, pay if you're building a new highway, tear down homes, you've got to pay those people a market rate in effect. For exactly. You have, exactly. To pay, you have to pay the fair market value, and that takes time to litigate. And if the president says, just go ahead and do it without that and defy a court, a court's going to say, hold on, we have mm -hmm. to deal with this. And if the president says, defy the court, that could be contempt of court as well. Uh, so, yeah, there's absolutely real crimes at play here, real potential crimes. And for the president to say, go ahead, I'll take care of you later, it is an incredible abdication of duty. Uh, you're not only a lawyer, you teach a class on law. Are you aware of another example in recent history of a president so blatantly ignoring the law? No, Jim, this is, this is the, the presidency when all the crazy law school hypotheticals come to life, mm -hmm. things you've never even contemplated, and we're exploring the outer boundaries of things like the pardon power. No one's ever 
contemplated uh, using the pardon power in this way before. So we've never, there's no case on this. It just comes down to ultimately what is the Constitution's intent and meaning. Um, but people will be studying this in colleges and law schools decades from now as right. sort of, like I said, the hypotheticals come to life. Right. Well, Ellie Honig, good to have your expertise Thanks, there. Listen up, folks, it's an important story. I know there's a lot of news out there.